We are going to go over how to simplify radicals, also known as roots, using your TI-83 or TI-84 calculator. I have four examples here on the right, and hopefully once I finish these four examples, you'll know how to do any roots or any radicals by using your calculator. So let's do the first one is a square root, and I'm starting with this one because it's the easiest to find on the calculator. It is not on a specific key itself, but it is over here in blue up above my squared key. So to push it, I'm going to have to push my blue second button, and then my square key is going to select my square root. But if I want to simplify this completely, I'm going to have to type in the negative first. So negative then my second to highlight my second feature, and then my squared key to select my square root button. Type in 36. To tell the calculator I'm done with the square root, I need to push the arrow over button, and that means I am out of my square root. To actually simplify it, I hit enter, and I figure out that this simplifies to be negative Let's move on to our second example, the cube root of negative 49. The calculator does have a cube root feature, but it is not on my main screen, not on a key, and not even on a second function. It is actually underneath the math mode. If we look, we can see it's under option number four, and it's got the cube root and then an open parenthesis. Now, while we're in this math mode, I want you to notice option number five as well. It is the x root. So if we have to do anything higher than a square root or a cube root, the feature that we're going to use is option number five, and we'll do that in our next example. Right now we want to do the cube root of negative 49. So I can scroll down to four and push enter, or I can just hit the feature for itself. Notice the cube root shows up. I type in negative 49, push the arrow over to get out of my root, and it simplifies to approximately be negative 3.659 and goes on forever and ever. Now, it might look like this decimal stops after the 1, but this decimal actually continues on forever with no patterns or no repeating digits. It is an irrational number. An easy way to tell the difference between an irrational and a rational number on your calculator is if you try and convert it back to a fraction. So I'm going to do that. Math, option one, converts it to a fraction and hits enter. Notice that it doesn't convert it back because it is impossible to convert it to a fraction, meaning it is irrational and not rational. Moving on to example number three, the fifth root of 82. So I have to use that other feature that I showed you before. Um, before I actually use that feature, I have to type in what root I'm specifically going for. In this case, the fifth root. So type in five, and then I'm going to use math, and I'm going to use option number five here, the x root of something. Since I typed in that five first, that's going to tell the calculator I want to take the fifth root of it. So I can scroll down to five and hit enter, or just hit five, and notice it converts it to the fifth root. Now this is a newer version of the calculator, so it changes things into what's called the math print mode. If you had an older version of the calculator, it would just look like five and then the x root. And that tells you that that's taking it as the fifth root. Um, type in 82. If you had an older version, you would have to type in the 82 and then close the parentheses. Here, we push the arrow button to get out of the root, and we can see that again, this is another decimal. It's an approximation of 2.4141417711. And again, this decimal does not stop. It keeps continuing on, even though the calculator stops here. The decimal can only display up to so many decimal points. All right, my last example is the square root of negative 25. And you should know why I'm including this here. But if you don't, go ahead and just type it into the calculator. My square root is above the x squared button. So second square root. Type in negative, and then 25, over to finish my square root, and enter. And we can see that it gives us an error. 
hopefully you know that it should be giving us an error because I cannot take a square root or an even root of a negative number at all. There's nothing squared or nothing to any even power that's going to give us a negative value. So we should know that this is not a real answer, and the calculator helps us remembering that by telling us this is a non-real answer. And whenever you get an error like that, you have an option to quit or go to. If you don't understand why you got an error, I suggest that you try the go to feature. Sometimes it helps you and sometimes it doesn't. What the go to feature does is it typically goes to where the calculator thinks the error is that you have it typed in as. Now this one doesn't help because there is no error that we've typed it in specifically. The error here is just in the math part of the problem. All right, so I've shown you how to use square root, cube root, or any root on the calculator, as well as reminding you how irrational and irrational numbers work, and also reminding you that you cannot take an even root of a negative radical or root. So this ends the calculator tutorial over radical.